energy of fear. So one thing that they're also hoping will happen as a result of this is that they'll put you back to sleep. They'll put you back into this energy of fear. And this is why they have all of these people coming onto the news stations and so-called police officers and different representatives saying, well, I fear for the people of Illinois. I fear that they will not be safe and that all of these criminals will be running rapid in the streets and we can't do anything about it. Fact of the matter is the whole time they were the true criminals. But when you was in a sleep state, you could not see that. You saw your neighbor as being the criminal, not saying that there's not true crime that's happening in Illinois because Chicago is like at the top of the list when it comes to crimes being committed across the nation. But at the same time, consider that the true criminals are the ones that created the system and that they are not their agenda has never been to keep the public safe. Their agenda has always been to enslave, to maintain power, and to maintain wealth. The prison system has created billions and billions of dollars for the U.S. corporation. And so they have strategically created environments specifically for the melanated man, woman, and child that would uh, that would um, that would culminate or that would create the energy of crime. Okay, it was it was a strategic act of these people to place us in an environment and to create a mental state, to create mental anguish. Okay, to create post traumatic slave syndrome so that we would ultimately work up against one another and we would ultimately have this, this anger, all of that aggression and that indignation, that righteous indignation would never be directed towards the true enemy, but instead we would always direct it towards one another because if we directed it towards the enemy, then they would come and wreak havoc, right? And so this is where... They knew that they were setting the stage. They was creating the environment, okay? So let's get right into what is the agenda, okay? I'm going to pull just a few cards and then I want to get right into my book here so that we can clearly see because when you stay a thousand steps ahead seeing this thing through your spiritual eyes, then it's like, okay, yeah, you're not going to get me because they want to get you in the voting. They want you to, they want to get you in line again. They want you to believe in the system again. They want you to believe that you need the system, okay? So this is no longer something where they want you to feel like it's an option. No, they want you to feel like your survival depends on it, okay? Um, look at that. We have religion and then we have fear. Religion and then fear. So they might very well find a way to, in, to include the religious aspect Hmm. They might find a way to use religion, whether it's certain pastors that might come forward and say, hey, well, you know, the crime rate is high. We need we're, we're in danger. We, we need the police force. We need them to be by our side. They're good. They might they might use religious leaders to come forward and to incite to further incite fear surrounding this so-called policy that's been enacted. But remember. The only thing that these people are doing is coming forward with a thick, they're coming forward with a thick packet of paper that's supposed to have all of this stuff written down on it. It ain't nothing but a bunch of words and paper. Words and paper. These people are doing nothing but presenting to you words and paper, okay? There's no substance to it unless we actually give it our energy. It holds no merit and it holds no weight unless we give them permission. You see what I'm saying? And so they know that they have to get our permission in order to establish certain things and in order to keep their system going. And so fear is the number one thing as well as religion. So maybe because remember, I told you we're moving into year seven. That's the year of spirituality where you come into that crossroads in terms of which direction you're supposed to be going and you become the seeker. You're no longer just 
passively allowing people to condition you with belief systems based on what your grandmother or your mother or your grandfather, great grandfather, grandmother told you. You are now seeking for yourself. And so I feel like they want to deter you. They want to distract you from your own evolutionary process. And so as long as you're in this energy of fear, you'll be seeking. What you'll be seeking is their, uh, their protection rather than coming into the realization that we possess everything that we need to protect ourselves. One question, the one, one, you know, uh, somewhat of a debate that I had with someone that I know personally was in regards to what, what would a melanated person do? Okay. Because I personally don't, I don't agree with the system. I don't agree with the structure. I know that it was all built on criminality. And so when it comes to the melanated man, woman, and child, it's to the point where it is dangerous even to dial 911, right? But the question that we had, that this discussion that we was having was, well, if you can't call 911, because this person was adamant, well, you shouldn't call them, don't include them in your business. And so I, as a melanated woman said, well, who should we call? Who should we call then? When crime is being committed, who do we call? And so this is where the pulse check is happening. Are they ready to govern themselves? Are they afraid to step into their power and their own authority? Or do they still have Stockholm Syndrome? Pulse check. Is Stockholm Syndrome still very much so alive? Are they still going to come begging the captor to, uh, to protect them? Are they still going to come crawling to us? Will they come crawling to us on their hands and knees when we tell them that this is the purge, that this is the time to be fearful, that your life can be in jeopardy, your children can be in jeopardy, your whole safety and every part of your community is in jeopardy because we have to hold ourselves back. We can't arrest someone that's robbing you. We can't uh, detain someone that is battering you. So the question is, who do we call? And this is where we have to start stepping into our purpose. If you believe that a part of your position in the body, when I speak the body, I'm talking about the body of Christ consciousness or the new kingdom that's being created within, you know, amongst us, within us and, you know, as a whole, when we all come together, what is your position? Is it to be a foot soldier out here to protect the man, woman, and child? Is, is it to be the eyes and ears of the community, the watchman who is readily available when someone is in need or someone is in trouble? That's what we need. We need to create and establish our own protection force within our own communities so that if there is someone, which there always is someone who is acting outside of their own integrity and may decide that they want to commit a crime, that we have people within our community that we can trust and that we can call on in the event of an emergency. These people are doing a pulse check to see, are they able to come together as a community of people to govern themselves? Because they know that that is what this shift is bringing. This shift that is happening here in the age of Aquarius is bringing people into a space where it's, I am ready to govern myself. I don't need someone else to tell me what integrity looks like. I don't need a criminal system to tell me how to operate and how to take care of my family or how to teach my children or how to feed my children or how to create health for my children. I don't need others telling me how to do this, but they want to see how much have we truly evolved. And if the majority of the melanated community specifically comes running back to these people, then they know that they still can buy more time because nine times out of 10, the same people that go and complain about this particular so-called policy being enacted will be the same people that are standing in the voting lines, at the voting booths, ready to, uh, to, to speak their truth through, through signing on that dotted line to say, I give the U.S. corporation permission 
to maintain their power over me and my offspring because I trust that if I stand in this line and I vote that someone is going to come and act on the behalf of myself and my community rather than you becoming the change that you want to see rather than that that same melanated man woman or you know man or woman that stands in that line creating the environment that they want to see to me it's, it's actually a, a way of being lazy when it comes to voting because you you end up standing in a line and signing off your signature to give someone else the authority to enact something that you yourself choose not to create you go and you vote for someone in hopes because you know that just because you give them your signature and your vote does not guarantee that they will uh, actually fulfill the promises that they have told to the public. You only go in there and you cross your fingers and hope that your vote will count. But if we did this the proper way, then we would say all of those policies, all of those laws that I want these people to abide by or to create on behalf of myself and my community, rather than asking them to do this for us, we need to be establishing leaders that are going to actually step forward and to create these things for our own community. Are you ready to self-govern is the question. So yes, they're going to use a fear. They're going to use fear and religion, okay? Um, you also have here... Okay, yeah, look at this. So, bottom of the deck, it says DNA, and then it says go back to sleep. So, they really want to see, has your DNA activated? Because this is the time of DNA activation. Has your DNA activated? Because in, in the process, when you awaken out of sleep, you spiritually awaken as above, so below. So, spiritually, you're awakened, so below would be your physical, your physical vessel. Okay, as within, so without. So those that that part of you, you know, they say that 98 percent of the DNA is junk DNA is dormant DNA in the age of Aquarius in the time of the awakening. The more that you evolve and come into an understanding spiritually, the more that your DNA awakens. Again, we're moving into year number seven, which is the number of spirituality. And so they want to put you back to sleep. They want to cradle you and rock you back to sleep through the energy of fear. And through the energy of the religious structure, they're going to use certain religious leaders. Look, watch and see them come forward. Watch and see them come forward because what they might also do is create scenarios of crime. These people are very strategic and trust and believe that before they announced this to the public, they had a plan. And like I said, an agenda behind an agenda behind an agenda. So they may even create scenarios of crime in specific communities so that people will come marching in and, and demanding that they implement or reinforce the previous statutes and policies that they had in place before they created this one. It's the reverse psychology of the enemy to put you back to sleep to prevent your DNA activation and to incite fear so that you will beg your enemy. Stockholm syndrome is what they are checking for. Don't be fooled. Do not walk around believing the hype, okay? These people are letting you know in so many words that they have to release their grip. They are losing their positions of power. And so it's going to start happening across the nation where you see that different states are going to start enacting this particular policy or they're going to start coming forward and acting like they're enacting some sort of policy. But the fact of the matter is they have to, they got to stand down because too many of us spiritual warriors have stepped in and said, we are not going to continue to be uh, the slave to your system. We are pulling ourselves out of the system. We are creating our sovereignty in the spiritual realm. And so, of course, as above, so below. You create it in the spiritual realm. It has to unfold and manifest in the physical. And so these people are feeling the impact of the work that we have been doing here. But this is their way of letting us know that they're losing their power. But also at the same time, they're watching to see how... How many people are going to be affected by it? 
how many people are going to be in an energy of fear as a result of it and how many people are going to come back begging them to protect okay so we have reparations coming out here and then we have stand up at the bottom of the deck here so reparations these people know that they owe they owe us a lot they owe us more than they can actually afford to give us and that's a fact and so i feel like you know they want to put you back to sleep they want to put us back to sleep through this energy of fear because they know that the more we awaken, the more we're going to demand what is rightfully ours. That is a part of our inheritance, what is inheritantly ours. Because the fact of the matter is, our ancestors built every part of, of, this, of their structure. Every part of their structure, our ancestors built it. And so because our ancestors built it, then technically they have the right and the authority over it. And so because we are the offspring of our ancestors, we inheritantly gain those things that they built, which is the whole entire country. Okay? And so these people, they cannot, the only thing they can do is, is release their grip and give us the sovereignty that we always deserve that should have never been stripped from us. But because we was in a sleep state, it gave them the permission. We, we were so sleep that we started walking in lines to go and sign off to give them permission to keep their foot over our necks for another generation and another one and another one. That's how sleep and mentally messed up we was. That's how much that Stockholm Syndrome has set in. Like it was, it was deeply embedded in our roots to the point where, you know, it, you, my generation, like the generation prior to me, you had those parents where it was like, if you said you didn't vote, they was all up in your face about that. What do you mean you're not going to vote when your ancestors, they struggled and they they fought. They fought to, to be integrated. They fought to have a right to go to schools with the Europeans and they fought for the right to drink from the same water fountains. Well, I beg to differ because sometimes you got to recognize that in a sleep state, your ancestors, they might have fought a good fight, but they was fighting for the wrong reasons. You don't never fight to integrate with people that don't want no bother with you. How foolish is that? The, the, a sane-minded person would never fight to become friends with somebody who clearly does not want to befriend them. But see, we thought that if we fought for that right, it was it was the it was the reverse psychology of the enemy. The enemy had already in, in, you know implanted within our minds that if you don't have the right to do what we are doing over here, then technically you are less than. But the fact of the matter was when we was doing our own thing and creating black wall streets and building our own banks and having our own school systems and all of these things, we was thriving absent the integration. It wasn't until the integration took place that we stopped thriving. OK, because we no longer worked in unison as a group of people, as a community of people, you know, and many of the things that we knew in terms of our culture and our belief systems got watered down and whitewashed and diluted with corruption and poison of people who never wanted to be a part of our community in the first place. Now, am I saying that all Europeans are bad? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is that this current structure, the U.S. corporation, was created by very corrupt and poisoned Europeans. And that many of them went on to create offspring who also was raised up and reared up in that same mindset. And so there is, you know, a line that needs to be drawn when it comes to the integration until the majority of the Europeans can admit to the fact that what has happened to the melanated man, woman, and child that needs to be recompensed for it. Reparations are well deserved. And anyone that says, well, no, that's the past. They don't need, then I guess you would say the same thing when something happens to your, your offspring or to your family member and you say, well, that happened 20 years ago. So just because they, you, you murdered my mom 20 years ago doesn't mean that you should go to jail today. No, they're going to always seek for justice. 
You're going to always seek for justice on behalf of your loved one that was wrong or murdered or, or, you know, kidnapped, whatever the case may be. You will always seek for the skills to be balanced. That's human nature. And so for anyone to say that the melanated man, woman, and child does not deserve recompense for the things, the atrocities of what happened to our ancestors, you have to be very blind and you have to still be in that white privilege mindset. There has to be a fear that if the melanated community receives what they rightfully deserve. Oh, there must be a fear that we're going to rise and rise and rise and create a kingdom that, that becomes a new, uh, a new Egypt, you know, or, or a new empire, you know, something that's going to be so powerful, so powerful that these people are going to feel inferior to it. That must be the fear in order for someone to say that reparations is not necessary. And so they want to put you back to sleep so that the majority of our community of people, as we go into that energy of seeking more, seeking out answers, seeking clarity and seeking truth, you're gonna come, the majority of the people who come into awakening comes to the conclusion that we deserve our inheritance. We deserve our birthright. We deserve our sovereignty. We deserve our reparations. So as long as you're in that energy of being asleep, you're just going to go right with the flow. Oh, it was nothing. You know, that was my ancestors. This is a new day and age. We can't punish them for what they did to our ancestors. But yet and still, you're still being punished for what happened to your ancestors. You're still bearing the burden of what your ancestors was not able to pass on to you because they lacked it. Whether it's mentally, spiritually, financially, or physically. They was not able to give it to you because it was stripped from them. Meanwhile, your oppressor is, has taken everything that belonged to your ancestors and they're able to rise up. They're able to thrive and to pass on to their offspring everything that should have been inherently passed on to you. And so this is why it's important to balance the scales because until those scales are balanced, nothing will be right on the planet within the cosmos, within, within, within the, the nature, the elements, nothing will be right or balanced until justice is served for those who wronged our people here on this soil as well as across the globe, okay?